Hi everyone, thanks so much for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. We had pretty dry weather today across the inland northwest, but we could see some rain tonight and tomorrow. Meteorologist Michelle Boss joins us now from the Weather Center. Hey Michelle. Hey, Memorial Day is looking really nice, but we do have a little bit of weather to deal with over the next 24 hours. One of those things is a little bit of wet weather. Satellite and radar picking up a few showers across the region right now. The radar looks a little bit more active than it really is. A lot of green showing up, but just very, very light sprinkles out there. In fact, Coeur d'Alene and Deer Park have both picked up only a couple of hundredths of an inch. Spokane has not actually seen any rainfall as of 10 o'clock. As we kind of zoom in, we can see uh, again what is very, very light precipitation is moving actually from east to west across the region as it rotates around an area of upper level low pressure well to our south. OK, we're also going to be dealing with some wind tomorrow. That might be the bigger factor, especially if you have plans to be on area lakes. Wind advisory in effect across the North Idaho Panhandle from 5 tomorrow morning until 8 p.m. We could see gusts as high as 50 miles an hour tomorrow morning, and it should be breezy the rest of the day as well. Not quite as windy across eastern Washington, but still a pretty brisk day with wind gusts around 30 miles per hour. Currently, the winds are starting to pick up just a little bit, 12 to 14 mile per hour sustained winds, and those will continue to increase overnight. And you can see those wind gusts up to 30, 35 miles an hour expected in Spokane between 7 and 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and then still pretty breezy for the rest of the day. Temperatures be a little bit warmer tomorrow than today, 68 degrees, but Memorial Day with partly cloudy skies should warm up to the 70s near 80 by Tuesday. A family in Springdale is taking Memorial Day weekend to honor a loved one. Donald Richardson died from health complications he received while serving in Vietnam. He passed away in January. Now his family is taking the time this weekend to remember him. For it was the veteran, not the preacher, who has given us freedom of religion. It was the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It was the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It was the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to demonstrate. It was the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. This year, veteran. Memorial Day for the Richardson family is personal. For the last 40 years, we've lived uh, almost a continent away, you know, but we, we talk to each other weekly on the phone. Today, they're honoring a brother, father, uncle, a veteran. Donald Richardson served two tours during the Vietnam War. He knew everything about how to load an airplane, where to send the cargo, what stuff had priority. In January, he died from complications with health issues the family believes came from him serving overseas. Agent Orange, you know, the story is there. Uh, that's going to get every one of us Vietnam guys eventually. It's a tragedy. He knew the sacrifice he was making, but his priority was his country. I can remember him telling me that he had to join. He said, I wanted to be right there to save everybody, too. So. And now on the weekend before Memorial Day, the day for honoring and remembering those who selflessly gave their all. Today, the American Legion and Veterans Honor Guard presented the late veteran with military honors. All of us veterans want that at some point, yeah, yeah. He was an awesome guy, you know, it's, and he served his country, which was awesome, and it means a lot. In Springdale, Shana Waltower, Crime 2 News. Thanks so much, Shana. New tonight, a new case of measles in Seattle. Health officials say a six month old baby has been diagnosed. The child was taken to Seattle Children's Hospital's emergency room with con while contagious. The visit happened Friday between 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. We are told the child contracted the measles from someone at home. This is now the eighth case in Western Washington. The family of one of three victims attacked in on a max train in Portland filed a $10.1 million lawsuit against TriMet and the Portland Police Department. The family says the two agencies did not take previous action against Jeremy Christian, who stabbed three people, two of whom died. The plaintiffs say if they had, they could have prevented the fatal assault. The suit says a day before the deadly attack, the suspect terrorized passengers on Max trains on two separate occasions. They claim he used hate speech, threatened to kill anyone who got in his way, and assaulted an African-American woman. Governor Jay Inslee just hit a crucial mark in his presidential campaign. He met the requirements to take part in the Democratic 
primary debates next month. Well, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not ruining your day by the call, but I wanted to call you, you know, uh, we've needed 65,000 donors uh, to make sure climate change is on the stage, and uh, you put us over the top, so I wanted to thank you. At a climate event in Las Vegas last night, he says he surpassed 65,000 in campaign fundraising. He shared this video on Twitter where he thanked his 65,000th donor. He's polling at 1%. The first debate takes place in June on June 26 in Miami. A new study found Tacoma is the hottest housing market in the nation this spring. Now, the real estate company Redfin says the typical Tacoma home found a buyer in just eight days. Redfin says that's the shortest median time on the market nationwide. Now, between April 21st and May 19th, 49.7% of homes sold went for more than the asking price. The pattern demonstrates how the market is being driven by buyers priced out of the notoriously expensive Seattle market. Now, this isn't just the case for the Seattle area. In the seven years since the housing crash ended, home values in more than three quarters of the U.S. metro areas have climbed faster than incomes. Nationally, home prices have climbed at an annual average rate of 3.8 percent since 2000, while average incomes have grown at an annual rate of 2.7 percent. Now, you may remember Spokane actually surpassed Seattle in November, with Spokane homes selling in just 59 days, while Seattle homes sold in 63 days, and that's according to Zillow data.